Hi, it's Tim Brown, and this is the third video of the visual design portion of the web design tutorial for beginner series. And we're going to be talking about several things today. We're going to be talking about listing items, shadows, alternating sections, and type or font selection and consistency. So let's get to it. All right, we pick up where we left off at the beginning of the first video before we edited the student's work. And uh, I've got these columns uh, kind of showing uh, a little bit of how it might break out if you're keeping things consistent. But you can turn that off at any time if you want. <clears throat> I'm going to use it for a second to kind of uh, to space some things out. So. I'm going to delete these because honestly icon design is a whole nother beast so let's not tackle that at this moment. Let's do some squares here. Um, let's say we wanted to visually call out three different things, three different services perhaps since we're talking about maybe a social media company or something. I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with a hypothetical company, let's say they're a social media company, and uh, I'm, I'm taking three boxes, I'm, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three, I'm going to shift and click on all three, I'm going to I'll press align up here in Illustrator, and align vertical align top, so that they all go together, and uh, let Illustrator do the math for us basically, and horizontally distribute center, Barely moved, so we were kind of on point there. Nice job. Look at this. We've got spacing here. This one is not directly in the columns, but we got the kind of spacing that I want. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the guides because they're a little distracting. So as you can see, it's not a crazy complicated website, but it's going to do what we want. So I'm going to select all three again and change these boxes to white. Hmm. Well, there's not a lot of contrast between these white boxes and the background. I am going to add photos and text to them, but I want a little bit more contrast between the white and the gray, so I'm going to turn up this gray, uh, rather make it a little darker, and from there, I'm going to make these a little longer. Just playing around here, but uh, I kind of know what I want. So I'm going to select all three, and I'm going to give them a little bit of a a drop shadow effect stylized drop shadow and I'm gonna use the multiply setting capacity of 75% X offset of 0 Y offset of 0 this is just oh it's either to the left or the right and this is either it's either to the top or the bottom I don't want it on either I just want it kind of a generalized shadow around this and um, I'm gonna use a blur of 5 pixels and a darkness of 60% Actually, you know what? Yeah, five pixels. Okay. And as you can see, there is a uh, there is a little bit of a shadow around the edges here. We're kind of giving a little bit of meaning, and uh, just a little background shadows were out for a while um, because at the beginning of the web, people went really hard on these very physical seeming aspects like bevels and shadows and gradients and so it was all the rage for a while it's called skeuomorphic design and then people got sick of it and design changed over to more of a flat look so less shadows and things like that and it's just now kind of becoming popular again to use shadows a little bit although more subtly um, in things like Google material design where they use shadows and transitions to provide a little bit of meaning and context for the elements. So I'm going to use it here in a subtle way and know that it does go in and out of fashionability. But uh, in the last couple years right now, uh, people are using it. So as you can see, the white with a little bit of shadow and then the light gray background looks kind of nice here. I'm going to go ahead and add some images. I have went ahead and downloaded a couple images from pickjumbo.com and I'm going to add them to this section 
um, add an image to each section without any space around um, without any space around them to these these featured these three featured items. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them here. If they're all the same width, then if these images are all the same width and height, then they're going to fit in there just perfectly. You might need to crop yours if you have different kinds of images. And I will say, although I'm kind of adding images quickly for the sake of this example, the images you choose in situations like this matter a lot. You want to get images that really give the story of the company that you're working with. And in this case, we have a hypothetical company, so it's not quite the same. But nonetheless, understand that those images that you choose really matter a lot. I'm going to go ahead and copy this headline, but obviously it's not going to fit right here, right? If it's a subtitle. So I'm going to make it blue. Oops. I'm going to make it blue here, and I'm going to bring down the font size to something significantly smaller than 57, maybe 20. No, that's too small. Let's go for 25, and it fits right, right in there. I'm not telling you to stick to one or two fonts, but I do want to let you know that it's very hard to master 10 fonts if you aren't able to master two or three. So I suggest for beginners starting with two or three fonts. Um, right here, I'm just gonna I'm gonna have a a uh, title font and a text font, a paragraph font. So let's pretend that their service is, is around uh, getting social media photography. So social media photography. Oops, it's it's, uh, it's a little bit too big here so I actually need to bring the font down let's say to 22 and in the end we want to leave enough space so that if they change the text here that uh, it will still look good social media photography and maybe we help you post regularly and maybe the last one is we help you engage with your audience. Oh man, that's too big. Um, maybe it just needs to, maybe it needs to be allowed to be on, on both lines. Let's just say we help you engage for the moment. And then I'm gonna grab this paragraph font and I'm gonna make it smaller so it fits in these sections. And We'll try to move on here relatively quickly because I know that if you're following along, it might take you a little while, but if you're just trying to learn without following along, then this is gonna get boring. So, I'm gonna make this smaller. And like I said before in the earlier video, it's super important that you don't try to divulge everything right away. So we want a, a sentence or two for each of these items. We don't want a massive paragraph for everything. You might want to go deeper on some of these items uh, later in the page, but when you're introducing stuff, remember, keep it simple. Pretend like people don't want to think and uh, often that's that's true. So I'm gonna do some blue buttons here though. Kind of call these out as say secondary actions, but still kind of, we'll see how this looks. There's always an element of experimentation with your design. I am not giving you the exact answer. I'm giving you a starting place and somewhere to play around with. I think honestly the whole theme of this this visual design series has to necessarily be you can do whatever you want with your visual design and there are some uh, general principles that will help you create compelling designs quicker and there are things that are a bit a bit more standard but you can really create whatever you want and some of these things just kind of help you get up to speed with what a lot of people are doing all right, so let's go read more and let's make this text white. 
I think we have a nice little convention here with a button at the bottom of these these featured areas. And for instance, let's say, you know, this is this is a nice looking little one, two, three here. Um, for instance, you might when when one of these buttons is hovered, let's say if it was done in code, it could go to a little bit darker. You know what I mean? So you can see how it might change on hover. Um, I'm kind of thinking ahead here, but something to think about. And so let's say I have an alternating section here. What would I do? I'm going to go with, let's say a blue section. And maybe this section, this section has a different photo, but for the sake of um, making it quick, I'm going to go ahead and, and, um, use one that we're, we're already using. And in this case, let's say I want to have some text here with a, with a subheading. Maybe we have some variations on the subheading because in this section we have a little bit more space. So that one goes up to, let's say 42. And um, as you can see, we have three separate kind of heading styles here. We have this one. I mean, if you're counting all the different sizes and color combinations here, we've got this big one, we've got this one, and we've got this third one that's kind of almost like this one, but a little smaller. So we've got three different kinds. And for the sake of showing a little bit more copy here, I'm gonna just copy and paste this. So now you can get a little bit more in depth. You've given them the sampler platter. We do this, this, and this. And now we've got a little bit more in depth look at one of the things. Uh, maybe we want it to be the first one so that we, we kind of have the priority still the same. Social media photography. Um, or perhaps it's a more emotional um, thing like gives them a value proposition because you don't want to be just so dry like in this case we're kind of telling them you can get socially connected and we've got a little bit more um, the value proposition there rather than just the dry this is what we do another good principle when you're designing is to realize you are not just sharing exactly what it is you want to you want to get in the mind of the person who might be a customer of this company and think what do they want well they want to get socially connected they're really looking for social media photography but I think of that as like a feature and what you want to get at is the benefit so what's the benefit to them essentially it's to appear up to date and to appear, you know, with it. So how do we say that in a friendly way? Um, look amazing on social. And a lot of companies, that's a real value proposition to them. They don't want to look like their company is out of date or not with it or so on and so forth. So you're really actually giving them, I'm gonna take uh, like a lot of value. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this button style, this ghost button that will look good over the blue and, and add it here. And in this case, I think that it makes sense for their next action to be to see case studies. A lot of times I'll have a little bit of a softer sell at the beginning of the page. And then as it moves down, I'll make the, the sell a little bit harder. Cause if they've read all the way down, they might be interested in actually making the next step like contacting you. So if I use this light gray before, maybe I want to actually just use uh, a white section. So now I've got three kinds of colored sections. I've got the gray section, I've got the blue section, and I've got the white section. We've got kind of, we're alternating for visual interest here, you see? And um, so I talked about shadows, I talked about um, this is essentially a list of items. Um, here's a, a general section that could be, you know, a, a common convention is like, let's say, alternating these images. So, you know, <clears throat> 
alternating images. And obviously in a real, maybe it's not that obvious, but in a real life situation, I'd actually have different images here than the ones above, but I'm just kind of giving this as a, a quick reference for what I'm saying. And essentially I would alternate text and, and buttons in this way. Um, As you can see, it's, it's a very easy way to get started. So, and I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you to get started now. I don't want you to be intimidated. It's, it's in a lot of ways, it's very simple. And perfection takes time, but getting started shouldn't. So, as you can see, I'm doing a little bit of alternation. Look, we almost, we have like a lot of a website here. There's a lot of content there. And you really want to be able to feature a good amount of content when it gets further down the page. You don't want it to be just images because you want there to be something for search engines to index and you want there to be enough information so that somebody can feel like they are being educated about your service um, or your client's service. So people are going to look for information. You want them to find the information on your site or your client's site. You don't want them to find the information on a competitor's site. And um, so you can see what I'm doing here. There's, there's some consistency to the typefaces I'm using, right? In this case, I'm going to use a, this style button. And we have more to go, but we've got the listing. We've got some kind of type selection and consistency in the alternating sections. So I'm excited to talk with you a little bit next time about the next steps in creating this design. All right, so that's a lot for today. The next video, we're going to be talking about icons, how to use an icon font in your interface, and a couple other things. So get excited, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.